Hey guys, you're watching Something Catchy. Today, I'm gonna show you how we pull blue crab traps. This isn't gonna be the full informational video like we did before, so if you wanna see that, click the top right corner right now. Today, we're just gonna show you how they did. We're gonna see if we've got any crabs. We might bring you along and show you a crab cake recipe at the end of the day. If all of them look like this, we'll be eating pretty good. So we got nice. one, two, three, four, five, six. We would have had seven, but they got hungry. So we got six nice blue crabs in here. Hopefully you guys can see them and I'm gonna dump them in this bucket. I like to keep a bucket or a cooler up on the deck with me so that I can kind of contain this whole production right up here on the deck when I have the kids with me. I don't necessarily want crabs falling all around. Sometimes you'll have a couple that end up running around on the deck. Just throw them in there. You don't want to get pinched by those suckers. They are not friendly. So basically, we just have a, uh, a container of chicken here. You can use whatever you like, but we have chicken today. Like I said, we go over baits in our instructional video. This is not necessarily a how-to, but more a come along and see. So I've got that baited. We're pretty much on the spot here. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this one in. We got six and we'll see you at the next trap. So come along. So we're at our second trap. Let's see how it did. We've already got what, six traps, six, oh, look at there. Now, that, ah, uh, is a dedicated crab too, look. I was trying to just show you guys the crab, but he decided he wanted my finger. <laughs> He's not letting go. Mackenzie, you want to see this crab? Look at here. It's a tiny one, isn't it? All right, so what did I do? Let the buoy go. We're going to go ahead and pull this trap and see if we've got any crabs in it. We've got six good crabs right now, so with any luck, by the end of this, we'll have maybe a dozen. So you might be wondering why I'm using this, and that's because these ropes get a lot of growth on them, and some of the stuff that grows on these can be real sharp. So you want to be careful while you're pulling these. Now that is an empty trap. That's not something that I would say is real common in this area this time of year, and I think this is why. As you can see up here, Something has happened to this trap and the, the door has a good space where the crabs could get out. So I think, considering there's no bait, that's probably what happened. So always try to bend your traps and make sure that they close very well like that when you throw them in. And sometimes that just happens from, you know, maybe the tide will be low and a boat will come by and bump it or Maybe uh, maybe a fish of some sort gets in there and bends it out, but it happens. So basically, I'm just gonna bait it and throw it back, and we'll check it next time. That's grabbing. And usually you wouldn't use your nice grilling tongs either, but unfortunately our crab tongs broke. Stuff happens, make do with what we got. I don't necessarily feel like touching that raw chicken with my hands. So, so we just got done pulling that second trap you guys saw. It was empty. Uh, the door was bent open a little bit. Could have been maybe a turtle or a fish or something that got in there and bent it out a little bit or maybe a boat came across it and just bent it in a little bit. It happens sometimes. So no crabs. That's all right. We're gonna head on to the next trap, trap number three, and we'll see you there.
Okay. This is a reason to check your traps often. If you put this in an area where you got a lot of stuff flowing through, you will uh, you will lose traps if you don't check them often enough. So as you can see, this is a pretty good pull. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine of them in there. So that's what I would consider a good pull. I'm gonna get the bucket here so we can drop them in there. Put them with the rest of them. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of time to clear the trap off. If you clear all of it off, it takes it longer to build back up on there and you lose less traps. Now that's a good pull. Look at all those crabs, guys. So you basically just pry this open. If you're lucky enough to where you've got one of those easy open hatches, that's good for you. I recommend those traps. If not, then you bend that open and you start to shake in this trap until they all come out. I think that was it. They all came out pretty easy, actually. Yeah. And then you always want to bend all your, uh, your entryways and everything back to normal. Make sure there's nowhere that any crabs can escape. So we're getting ready to put trap three back in the water here. I got it baited while the camera was getting the battery change. As you guys remember, that was the best trap. There was nine crabs in that trap. So we've been blue crabbing in this area for years now. I don't necessarily think that there's a spot that is, you know, the best spot. What I find is the crabs actually kind of move around. Maybe they're in one spot real thick and then the next week they're not there at all. You really just have to kind of put traps here and there. And if, uh, if your traps aren't producing, sometimes you just need to move them. And if one's really doing well, sometimes we'll actually move all of our traps into that area for a week or two until they're not producing anymore. And doing that has resulted in really good luck for us. Hopefully this one's good. Number four didn't have anything in it. Wow, look at there, we got one, two, three, four, five, six crabs. Good day of crabbing so far today. These are pretty good size too. And so if you were watching, paying attention earlier, I mentioned something about the easy access bait doors. So when you guys are buying crab traps, you really want to look for the ones that have the bait, or I'm sorry, the crab release hatches to get your crabs out of the trap that actually open up, not just the ones that bend open. Those are kind of irritating. I'm gonna girt this bucket. We'll be back at it. Six more blue crabs. We got a couple dozen now. Doing pretty good. Nothing fancy there. If you've got time and a cast net, a mullet will work. If you catch fish that you don't eat, those will work. If you catch fish, you fillet them and you keep your carcass. It'll work, but it's honestly not the best. It depends what you catch. 
they're not a huge fan of redfish redfish eat them so watch out for things that eat crabs just make sure you're clear of the line good to go why not all right i think this is the kids favorite time of the day treat time you like those skittles yeah mm. what about you bud skittles whoop <laughs> they're so goofy. I love the red ones. Me too. Thank you. Alright, what was your favorite part about the day? Hop. Bait shop. The bait shop. What was your favorite part of the day? When I took that really big shrimp and I put it on Mackenzie's setup and I sent it out, I had a feeling she'd get a good one. My favorite part was when I saw her holding it and get yanked forward and the rod get pretty close to the side. I was wondering if she was going to drop it, but... I got a little concerned here. <laughs> that was probably my, part, my favorite part of the day. That was pretty good. I hope there's a good video clip for you guys to see. I think I got it. What about you, little man? What was your favorite part of the day? Get it. The Skittles? Is that what you said? Like yeah. <laughs> you, you guys are silly. I think my favorite part of the day was hanging out with my family and getting to come out here in this beautiful area and enjoy the nice sunshine. It was supposed to be really nasty out today. We were almost not gonna come. It was calling for some really bad thunderstorms, but it cleared up and it is just a gorgeous day out here. We're having a great time and we got to catch some fish and a ton of crabs. That was a huge pull. So we're gonna go head home and clean them up and get to cooking them. So we just got done cleaning off the boat and had our crabs soaking in our ice bath. Now they're all nice and happy and chilled out. I'm going to start shucking them because we have this giant storm coming through. So I don't have much time. Woo! I better hurry up. You know, I already did a video about how to clean the crabs. But in case you guys haven't seen that video or maybe need a little refresher, I like to take the crab. Take one point, press it down, put all, uh, put my thumb over all of the legs, and peel the shell back. Oh, sometimes they break. <laughs> but yeah, the shell normally comes off nice. Throw that out, rip all the dead man fingers off. I've already ripped the face off, and now the uh, apron in the back just snaps off real easy, and there you go. So, oh, this one was about to start molting, so I just pulled this uh, shell off, and he's already got um, a new shell starting underneath. That's really cool. He's very soft. He wasn't soft all the way on the outside yet, though. Let's see. We got a crab one time and it was so strange. The meat looked very weird on it uh, when I was shucking it before we had cooked it or anything. Um, oh, it's starting to drizzle. <laughs> um, and it looked like the meat had been taken over by worms. If I can find the picture, I will put it um, in this video. It looked disgusting. Like millions of worms had just taken over and eaten the inside of the crab and taken the place of the meat. I've never seen anything like that before. I'm really happy I looked. Um, I, something caught my eye, I don't really remember what it was, but something made me look and I was like, wait a minute, that's not right, that's not meat. So <laughs> that one got thrown out. I bet that makes him wanna wait around for the cooking part. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to make your stomachs turn. <laughs> oh, this was a, this one was a female. 
I don't think I've gotten to show you guys a female yet, but their aprons are much wider than the males. If you see the male aprons, very narrow, and the female is very wide. You can also tell the females by the red tips on their claws. They're very pretty. So just remember, blue, male, red, female. Yeah. That's how um, Mackenzie, when she was two, she was able to distinguish the difference between the males and the females. She'd always be like, that's a girl crabby. <laughs> yeah, she's been crabbing with us for a while. Yeah, she loves it. Look at the size of that one. Wow, that's a big claw. And of course, Jameson loves the crabs too. Oh yeah, he definitely loves the crabs. When he gets a little bit more stable on his feet and a little bit bigger, we'll have him up on the deck pulling them too. He eats them faster than we can chuck them. He does, he does. I can barely even get a bite in before he's eating them. That's why sometimes it's nice to, um, it's always nice to just have a big pile of blue crabs and eat them. But it's nice to also have them shucked and then put into a meal like what we're gonna do with the crab cakes or crab stuff, mushrooms or, you know, a chowder. So good. Oh, okay, good. I got them all done before it started to rain. Let's spray these off. Wow, I can't believe I got that all done in time. All right, before it actually starts to pour down on me, I'm gonna get these guys inside and lady <laughs> inside and get to cooking them. All right. I can't get the last few, but check out all these crappies. So our water's nice and hot. We're going to go ahead and drop the crabs in, but first we're going to season them nicely with some Old Bay. I like to put quite a bit. You can put however much you like. So after you've seasoned them however much you like, you go ahead and throw them in the pot. Right there. All right, our camera died. But I'm gonna go ahead and let these steam for about 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator to let them cool off completely. Because when I make crab cakes, I really like to have uh, the crabs nice and cooled off. If I'm not eating them right away, I just like, I like to shuck them better that way. Whoa, I just made the oven have some weird issue. This is a new oven, so <laughs> don't judge me. I know how to work an oven. <laughs> just not this one yet. All right. You want me to hold it? Okay. Glass. Yeah. All right, get all the stuff on the top. Well, we'll get it. There you go. Scoop all that out of there. All right, that's good. Okay. And here is two tablespoons of mustard. Oh, you're going to need that again. of Worcestershire. You could probably just dump this one. You want me to do it? You want to do it? I want to do it. Okay. Dump. Good job. Ooh. It looks so brownish. Mm-hmm. Do you want to crack the egg? Okay. Okay. That's wow. I didn't even know that was going to happen. All right. Can I drop it? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Stir that on up. Do you want to squeeze the lemon? Uh, I'll eat it. 
Okay, so you're gonna need about a teaspoon worth of lemon. Uh-oh, we don't want any seeds in there. Get that little guy out of there. I don't wanna eat that. No. Yep, mix it all up real good. So I've already shucked this crab meat. Yeah. <laughs> we did that last night and it yeah. chilled in the fridge. So today it's about a, about a pound's worth of it and we're gonna dump it in here. It's a lot. It is a lot. Can I can you pour it in right now? Yeah. Okay. Can I do it now? Yep, go ahead. Mix this up. Can you eat it? Yep, mix it all up. And then you're going to want to add a little bit of Old Bay, just to taste. You don't need yeah. to put too much, but we do like a lot. The recipe says about a half a teaspoon, so just add as much as you want. And an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Again, we just do it to a taste. I like salt. Yeah. And a little bit of pepper. All right, stir it all up, girl. So let's take about two thirds of a cup of crackers, I'll saltine have, crackers. Put that in. Big squeeze. Yeah. Uh, All right. Okay. So we're just gonna sprinkle some of these in here. The recipe doesn't really call for it, but I like to add a little bit just to give them a little bit more uh, uh, texture. Structure. Texture. Yes. Good. She's so smart. <laughs> You're doing really good. Do you want help? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I can't really see it. You just don't want your crab cakes to be super watery. No, 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 no. No, 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 no watery crab cakes. Mm. Some people like watery cupcakes. <laughs> watery crab cakes, but we don't really want it to get watery. <laughs> no, we don't. Tell us what. There we go. They're not watery. Nope, they're perfect. I can just pop them in a bowl. Yeah, we're gonna make the patties now. You I can't take... just like scoop it up and you can grab it. All right, that's cool. Teamwork, right? Yeah. So you wanna take just like about a little, like maybe a little bit bigger than a golf ball and squish put it right, down. Can you put it right there? Yeah, I'm gonna put it right there. Okay. Smack. Oh, yeah. You're going to scoop it out for me? Yeah. All right. A little bit more? What was that? Just a little piece of shell. Sometimes that happens. Put what? You push it down. Smack. Smack. Now you can either bake these crab cakes or fry them. Today we are going to fry them. Yeah. A little bit more? Nope, that's perfect. That's Good a job. bunch. Yes. Smack. Smack. This is kind of like Smack it. wet Play-Doh. <laughs> yeah. Like a not sticky slime. Yeah. All right. Smack. celery and onions in this recipe. We're not going to do that today. I like my crab cakes without any of that in it. They, it just it has such a good flavor already. I don't think you need to add anything else, but you can if you want to. Yep. A little bit more. Scoop. So I can mash them all. All right, give me the rest of that stuff and we'll just make one big patty. That was the last one. It's gonna be for dad and you guys. Oh yeah? Well thanks. You don't want the biggest one? Uh, maybe I will. Maybe you That's will. That's the biggest. That one is a pretty big one. They don't all have to be about the same size. Oh, uh oh, overboard. Good job. It's worth the trouble. 
It's worth the trouble, huh? So good. All right, so we're gonna put these in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes to let them get nice and firm so that when you fry them, they don't fall apart. So we'll get you in just a minute. Yep. I will. All right, now that my crab cakes are done chilling out, I'm gonna start frying them up. Okay. I'm not gonna have Mackenzie in here for this part, obviously, because hot oil and little children don't mix. But I think she did a great job helping me out. I'm gonna do three. taking these off. They've cooked for about three minutes on each side just until they're nice and crispy. They look so good. Lana. Jameson. <laughs> That's my little boy back there. He's almost two years old. <laughs> yep, and Mackenzie's three years old. Hi guys, so well, it's hard, so I'm going to get into this. All right, let me know if it's good. Hold on, guys. Mm. You want a crab cake? Is it Jameson? tasty? That's good. All right, we've got Mackenzie's approval. The other ones are a little too hot for him. Oh, yeah, isn't that good? He just shoves the whole thing in his mouth. Mm, he's like, I already know I like this. Mm, yeah. I don't know I like This little guy will eat more crab cakes than you can even imagine. Tell me. Oh yeah, he loves crab. He goes, yeah. crab, crab, um, crab, crab, um, 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 Guys, these are good. They're sure. Alright, high five. Jameson. Woo! You did an awesome job. Thank you. Give me a high five, Mackenzie. Well, I hope you guys liked this video. We all had a lot of fun. Give us a like and a subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. Like my shot. Give it a big You gotta say it loud and proud, kid. Hi guys, so this is the end of this video. I hope you like this video. Show my channel and give me a big thumbs up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you okay? All right, what's the last part? What do we do? Peace. Peace.